Protestants in one German diocese are now officially allowed to receive Holy Communion. The question is, will Pope Francis stop the sacrilegious practice before it spreads? Joins with the latest from the Eternal City Church Militants Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, story about a priest in Germany revealing his diocese is now officially giving Protestants the green light to receive Holy Communion. Uh, is this true? And if so, how can this be? Uh, Brad, into communion and even concelebration with Protestants has been taking place quietly under the radar around the world for quite some time uh, with no discipline taken against the rebels. But now in Germany, the Diocese of Onnesbruck has actually published a document officially permitting this. Uh, we just heard that uh, Cats.net, a German portal, has published the story where Father Reinhard Molitor talks to his, you can see him there in the picture, talks to his German Lutheran counterpart, uh, the Reverend Günther Baum, who belongs to the very liberal state Lutheran church in Germany. And they are basically discussing and celebrating the new integration official policy of intercommunion between Catholics and Protestants. Now, I guess we have to emphasize the fact that this officially, publicly, openly is really the aspect of the story here, because as you're saying, uh, uh, even Molitor here now he's he's giving to to uh, he's giving some inter uh, in that interview he's giving some insight that this actually has been going on for for quite some time now. Well, absolutely. He says that, you know, uh, this is common practice, particularly if uh, one of the spouses belongs to a, a Protestant denomination and, you know, the other spouse is Catholic. And we know that uh, at so-called ecumenical meetings, this has actually been encouraged. Uh, but now, uh, you know, uh, Father Molitor is saying that this is official policy in this direction of Osnabrück. Now, one of the, the quotes that jumped out for me from the interview here, Jules, uh, Molitor was saying, even before, uh, even before all this, I was giving communion to Lutheran Christians, he admits, but I wasn't able to officially invite them to receive. I'm glad that's different now. So that really seems to be the, the, the crux of the story here is that it's official and uh, out there right now. Um, what do we know about what do we know about uh, Molitor's uh, diocese, the state of that diocese and, and his background there? Uh, first of all, the official uh, position is so official, if I may put it that way, that uh, Molitor's diocese, which is quite a troubled diocese, by the way, has published a, a 76-page booklet. You can go to the diocesan website and download it in a PDF format. Uh, and uh, the former bishop of the diocese, the bishop, the diocese is without a bishop at the moment, uh, and uh, the former bishop, Bishop Franz Josef Boder, had to resign uh, because he was surrounded by a cloud of uh, sexual abuse, cover-up, and all that sort of thing, allegations. But before resigning, he nevertheless put his signature and wrote uh, to this document, a 76-page document, and and wrote the foreword permitting, uh, you know, just basically putting his episcopal imprimatur on the intercommunion uh, statement. Now, Jules, it's, I guess, the dirty secret that, you know, this, this type of thing has been going on unofficial for quite some time. Uh, what is the Catholic Church's official policy? on interfaith communion because some people say, oh, well, they do allow for it, but it seems to be a lot of caveat with all of that. Uh, well, absolutely, uh, Brad, and it's not just going on at, you know, priest's level, but it's also going on at the level of bishops, and I've been an eyewitness to uh, events uh, of, you know, of an ecumenical nature where 
Catholic bishops celeb can celebrate the Eucharist before a crowd of about a thousand to three thousand people with an Anglican bishop, with a uh, Catholic priests, with Orthodox priests, and with uh, 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 Anglican uh, and even Lutheran ministers there. So uh, th th you're right, uh, this goes against the canon, goes against canon law because uh, officially the position of the Catholic Church is very clearly laid out in the Code of Canon Law, uh, Canon 844, Paragraph 4. Yes, uh, the Catholic Church says uh, communion can be given to uh, non-Catholics, uh, particularly Protestants, in case of grave necessity, but this is what it says. If the danger of death is present, or if in the judgment of the diocese and bishop or conference of bishops, some other grave necessity urges it. And it goes on to say that these uh, Protestants can receive communion provided that they manifest Catholic faith in respect to these sacraments and are properly disposed. Uh, they would have to uh, make known that they believe that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist. Yeah, Jules, that's, uh, that's a lot just like catech the Catechism, the Catholic Church, uh, uh, comes out in, in paragraph 1401 and says, when the ordinary's judgment, uh, I'll, I'll read the statement here, when the ordinary's judgment, a grave necessity arises. Well, there's some rubber room right there in the ordinary's judgment, but there is no ordinary with Moliter's diocese right now. It's, it doesn't have a bishop, so that's out. A grave necessity arises. I don't see where you have a grave necessity for people just coming forward on a regular Sunday Mass. Uh, Catholic ministers uh, may give the sacrament of Eucharist, penance, anointing to the sick to other Christians not in full communion with the Catholic Church who ask for them their own will. Provided, as you're saying, they give evidence, give evidence of holding the Catholic faith regarding these sacraments and, and possess the required dispositions. Now, I guess that means they never committed a mortal sin in their life, or if they did, they had a perfect act of contrition or somehow went to a Catholic priest to get absolved. Uh, but the but the Molitor's diocese has no bishop, and, and that's out. Grave necessity, we say, is out. Uh, so, you know, how can they, during this interview, we talk about, are they going to give evidence? These people, are they going to give evidence that they believe? And Reverend Baum, who was also present at that, that interview with, with uh, Molitor, uh, he says because they don't reserve the, you know, they don't reserve the Blessed Sacrament, what do they do? Uh, Jules, what do they do with the Blessed Sacrament, consecrated species, in a Lutheran ceremony as evidence of how they believe or don't believe? What does he say they do with the Blessed well, Sacrament, uh, Christ's body, blood, soul, divinity, after the ceremony is over? Well, this just shows you how liberal the uh, state church of Germany, the Lutheran church, has become. And, and Brad, uh, you know, we've been talking about this again and again and again in different contexts. Uh, the Vatican and the official Catholic hierarchy seems to be schmoozing up to not uh, evangelical Protestants, you know, who at least believe in the authority of the Bible and who are serious about mission and evangelism, but they seem to be always schmo schmoozing up to the left-wing liberals who don't really believe anything. Uh, now, uh, uh, Reverend Gunther Baum rather shockingly says that, well, once upon a time, uh, you know, after the service, uh, we would just feed the consecrated, the farmer would take the consecrated elements, the bread, and feed it to the geese. Now, that is shocking because he is contradicting his own Lutheran position. He's contradicting the, the, the official book of Concord, where, which clearly states that uh, Lutherans believe in the real presence. They reject transubstantiation, but they do believe in the real presence, and they don't believe that uh, real presence just disappears. Uh, I spoke to uh, a, a Lutheran pastor uh, uh, from the Confessional Lutheran Church just before we came on air, and I asked him if he would share communion with somebody like uh, Gunther Baum or a liberal, uh, you know, Protestant Lutherans from the State Church of Germany, and he categorically said he would not, uh, unless, of course, he spent time with them and discerned that they really believed in the Lutheran presence. So, uh, 
exactly this is where the Catholic Church in Germany is at. And by the way, it's not just Onesbruck, but now the Diocese of Stuttgart, Rottenberg, uh, is also jumping on the bandwagon and producing an official document. Of course, unofficially, this is prevalent all through Germany. So I, I guess with Baum, I mean, there, there was a term called consubstantiation where the bread still remains present. I mean, they wouldn't use that term, of course. Uh, trans means the bread changes into the body, blood, soul, divinity is no longer present. They wouldn't use that term. They would think it's archaic. Uh, but the, still, the, the, the crux of the matter on that faith right there, whether they believe the real presence is there or not, they don't have tabernacles in their churches. Um, and so that would lead to the question of what they would do with the Blessed Sacrament if there was consecrated species that they believe the Christ is really present there. Um, they wouldn't retain it. Uh, do they consume it or how does that go? Well, in you know every Protestant church that uh, respects the Holy Eucharist, uh, the elements are always consumed. Uh, and of course, there are high Anglican churches where there are tabernacles for the, reserve, the sacrament to be reserved. But uh, you know Lutherans would always re reverently consume the elements, and uh, they reject transubstantiation because uh, you know they believe it's a later uh, Aristotelian. Uh, development, uh, and, and as you rightly said, right, they don't use the term consubstantiation. But there is definitely uh, the practice of consuming the elements as something which Reverend Juntenbaum doesn't seem to know or doesn't seem to care about. So the question is, Jules, I mean, there's nobody giving evidence. It doesn't sound like Moliter is asking anybody for evidence of their belief. Um, and they're, they're coming from, uh, you know, all across, even within the Catholic Church. In America, they say 7 and 10 don't believe uh, what the Catholic Church teaches, that the Christ is really truly present by the words of the institution of the priesthood, Christ working through the priest, transubstantiation happening, no longer bread present, Christ remains after uh, Mass, you know, the re reservation of the Blessed Sacrament, Christ's real presence to adore. Um, so seven and ten there don't believe. I mean, I wonder how many in liberal Germany of, of, the, of the Lutheran people just coming up willy-nilly. I mean, how many actually would be uh, holding to an official position that even Baum doesn't seem to know, and he's their minister over there. Uh, so this question then, if this is official policy to open communion to these people, uh, hopefully of goodwill, so the question is, will Rome step in and stop this practice, which they're advertising is, is, is moving on to another diocese soon, um, which is not in accord with canon law, as we, as we talked about. Uh, will they stop this, which very easily can be considered sacrilegious communion if it's being you know, consumed by people who do not believe in uh, you know, the Catholic understanding of, of, of the Eucharist. Are, is Rome going to act here uh, to step in, or is this just going to be something that's just let go? Your take on that? Uh, right, that's the million dollar question. And you have rightly asked me the same question when, it, you know, when we talked about the three seasons of same-sex blessings given by Catholic priests in Catholic churches in Germany. And what happened? Uh, the answer to that was, of course, fiducia supplicans, which has only made things worse. Uh, uh, and now uh, I contacted the dicastery for the discipline of uh, the sacraments and the and, and the dicastery for worship and uh, asked them this question. I, I asked them if they know that this is now the official position that is contradictory to the official position of the Catholic Church. You can't have a diocese with an official position, a Catholic diocese, and the Catholic Church with, a, with two contradictory three official positions. And uh, well, uh, not surprisingly, they haven't responded to my query. Okay, well, we'll pray for church leaders who Christ has actually given the delicate task of protecting uh, him himself as our vulnerable Eucharistic Lord. He came once as a humble babe, but he is now among us as an even more humble fashion as, as the Eucharist. Uh, please pray that he always be received worthily by believers. As St. Paul warns in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine, for he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning 
the body of the Lord. Uh, Jules, thank you so much for your report, and keep us updated on what the two dicasteries uh, will do or not do uh, to immediately step in and stop this sacrilegious practice. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. The show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless. Thank you.